All right, today we are going to go through the setup of a new bow out of the box. Uh, this will actually, this is a, an old bow of mine that I'm redoing the peep sight and the D loop and the rest on, but this exact same process is going to apply if you pull a new bow out of the box. And there's three things that, that I always try to do uh, initially when I set it up. I get the rest on and tie the D loop and get the arrow leveled and then tie in a peep sight and tie in my rest cord or the rest cable for a fall away rest. So I'm going to go through those three steps today and just show the initial setup that uh, I do. I used to live uh, in a place where there are a lot of pro shops. I could just take it in there, have them quickly do it and set it up. But uh, a couple years ago we moved and we're a long ways from any pro shop. So having the, the ability and the knowledge to be able to set my bow up when it gets shipped to me uh, is, is super important. And I think it also um, allows me to feel like I am in control. I know what's going on with my bow and I'm able to get it set up and tuned to my specifications and to uh, my liking. So I'm just going to start off. The first thing I do is I get the bow set up and I want to make sure that it's level. So if I level the string uh, vertically here, if I have the arrow coming off the string square and it's level, I know everything's going to at least get me in the ballpark. So First thing I want to do is just use a, a string level. It just snaps onto the string. And we want to get the bow set so it is level. Right about there. So we've got the bow leveled there. And then I just put the rest on. So I'm going to be putting on the HHA Virtus rest, and it's just a standard fall away rest. It's got the cord that attaches to the cable on the bow, and as the bow is drawn back, it stands the rest up, and then when the bow goes off, the rest drops out of the way. So we'll install this, and again, all of my uh, initial installation, they're just to get us on the board and to get us close. We'll fine tune it a little bit later here. I'm just going to put the rest on. And what I'm typically trying to do is end up with the arrow. So it's pretty much centered on the burger hole. So this is the, the burger hole right there on the riser. I want the arrow to end up so it's basically dead center on that burger hole as far as when it's sitting on the rest and the rest is up. So if I look at that, just to get a rough estimate, I don't want to be up a little higher. Right about there is pretty close. So I can tighten that down for now. And I like to really get good snug tightening on that. These rests also come with a little set screw that you can put in the back of the rest bracket and actually tighten it down against the riser. All right, so we're good there. You'll notice the HHA Virtus rest comes with about I don't know, 10 or 12 inches of uh, its D-loop material, just the, the cable or the cord that's used to attach to the cable on the bow, and that's what actually activates it. We're not gonna tie that in yet, and I'll uh, show you how we do that here in just a little bit. but. When you get a new bow out of the box, a lot of times manufacturers will send, uh, send the bow with a knocking point already set at where they suggest the center to be when you're uh, setting your loop. Also, a lot of times they'll send it with a string, uh, just a small piece of string, splitting the string about where the peep sight's going to go. So it makes it easier to be able to get in there, get that peep set uh, in the string. So this one's been set up before, and I've got my... Uh, tie spots right here for that. So I'm just going to tie the loop on and tie in a D loop. Once we have the rest set, we tie the D loop and then we're able to establish uh, the arrow square coming off the string and really try to get it centered at the perfect location. So the bow is going to shoot an arrow really well and it's going to be tuned. So for the D loop, the D loop is just uh, the loop of string or cord that comes off of your main string they use to attach the release to. And rather than attaching straight to the string with the release, the D-loop's gonna give you a better point 
uh, of contact. It's not going to torque the bow. It's not going to be as abrasive on your string. And it's a pretty common way to set up that release point. So I just cut about six inches of the D-loop cord. I'll take and melt one in so we get a good ball on the end of that. That's going to keep it from pulling out. So the easiest way to, to tie the first, the bottom portion of the loop, is just double the, the cord over. You've got a loop here. And just bring both ends back through that. And I want to make sure that the shorter end, the end that I just melted, is actually on the bottom uh, of this loop. So I've got the long one on top, short one on bottom. And I want to make sure that that is pretty short there. So I'm just going to pull that down in, get that right down tight there. Now when I really tighten that, the part where I just melted, it's going to prevent that string from pulling back through on itself there. I just want to slide that up tight on that. And what I've done here is just taken some serving string, uh, just some smaller diameter serving string, and tied basically my knocking point, so high and low. So when I tie my loop, I've got a place above and below, so it's not going to be sliding up and pinching the arrow. It just prevents uh, that knock on the arrow from getting pinched when I draw back. So I've got that tied on. I'm going to pull it super snug here. Slide that up as tight as I can get it. All right, so we've got the bottom part of the D-loop tied on. We've got it snugged up there. And you'll notice I've got the loop of the string on the back side here. So I want to do it opposite as I do the top. So basically, I don't want to go behind the string now. I want the D-loop in front of it. And all I'm going to do is bring the D-loop in front. I'm going to come through my D-loop, basically. I'm underneath the, the D-loop. Now I want to go over the D-loop, around behind the string, and back through. So I end up like that. And you'll notice I've got the basic shape there. Now on the D-loop, when I get this on, I'm going to stretch it quite a bit. So I've got a tool here to help stretch that out. Basically put that in stretch it and it really seats that in there. So I want to make this fairly short at this point because once I tighten or stretch it out, it's going to really, um, it's going to expand quite a bit. So I want that loop to be, I would say, probably right about there. So you'll notice that's, that's awfully small. We're talking, I'll measure it just to give you a reference here, but from the center of the string to the center of the D loop, we're looking uh, less than a half an inch. So when I finish that D loop, I'm gonna want it to be uh, probably five eighths of an inch or so from the center of the string back. That gives me plenty of room to clamp on with the release and be able to pull back on that. So right about there is probably pretty good and we're fairly tight. So I'm just gonna give a good snug pull there. Make sure we're down tight and we should be all set there. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and I'm going to melt the end of this so it doesn't pull back through. I'm just going to leave probably about an eighth of an inch there. Make sure you do not cut your bowstring. Now I've got that end sticking out and to make sure we don't melt our bowstring. I'm going to bring that right around there. And now I'll get a flame. All I'm trying to do is melt the end of that there and make sure that I don't get anything that shouldn't get heated up right now heated up. 
I'm just going to grab this and pull it through a little more here. Tighten this down. And that's going to come. We're going to pull that back in when we tighten the loop there. That. So we're just going to... Melt it in, get it good and flat there. And now, stand the bow back up. Our basic D loop is tied. Now this fancy little tool just goes in between the D loop and the string. And it's just a, it's got a D loop stretcher on it. So all I'm doing is squeezing that and you can see it pulling through. And I'm fairly well snug right there. And I've got my D loop. So that's how you tie on the D loop. From there, now I'm able to get my arrow leveled on the string and the riser. So let's go ahead and level the bow again. All right, so pretty level right there. Once I get it eyeballed and close, I can just put another level on the arrow itself. And I can tell exactly where level is. So as long as I'm level on the string over here. All right, right there's pretty much perfectly level on the string. And you'll notice that we're pretty close to level on the arrow. I could bring the rest up just ever so slightly. But I'm going to leave it right there. I've found that being just slightly knock high gets me the best tuning when I shoot through paper. So I'm going to leave it set right there. And then once we start paper tuning, we'll dial it right in. So I've got D loop tied on. I've got my arrow rest so that the arrow is pretty well balanced and level coming off of the string. And the next thing we need to do is tie in a peep sight and then tie in our rest cable to the bow cable here.